Hey there, fusing folks. Here's another glass fusing project for you. In this video, I will show you how you can use kiln paper and some different glass paint mediums to create some graphic designs in your glass artwork. Here are your supplies. For this project I chose a 5x5 five five dish and after cutting two pieces of clear uh, to 5x5 five five, I used one of those pieces to cut a piece of kiln paper. This piece of kiln paper will be what I sandwich in between my two pieces of clear and it's what I'm going to cover in paint and stamps. I want to make sure this piece of paper is going to be smaller than my Five by five clear because I need um, that border of glass to uh, encircle and entrap my paper because the paper will not fuse to the glass, the glass needs to fuse to the glass. So I just use the edge of uh, my cut clear piece to tear my square, which is just under five by five, it's probably close to a four and a half by four and a half. And I wanted a consistent edge all around. So if you want a straight edge, you can cut it all around. I liked the torn edge. And so I used the edge of my glass to tear it all around. And then I just used an X-Acto to cut a slightly larger piece of kiln paper, which will be what I build my piece on. So before you start stamping, definitely try and lay out uh, your design a little bit. Figure out which stamps are going to go where and the type of enamel or paint you're using uh, should help you determine where on your glass you're going to stick it. To start I'm using the glass glaze which does not go glossy when you fire it so it does need to be under a layer of glass. Um, so I'm going to stick this on the inside of my of the square. So I'm using my little ponce and I'm dabbing out my paint so I have an even layer on my little sponge and then I'm just transferring that to the stamp, uh, trying to load it up, uh, but I don't want to make it too gooey because then it'll just smush and make a mess. So just enough to kind of ink it up and then I'll gently place it where I want on my glass and I'll just use my hands to press it down and then carefully peel it away um, so I don't accidentally smudge it. Ta-da! You'll notice different mediums will stamp differently. This glass glaze uh, kind of has that plasticky effect where you know peel the plastic away from the paint, um, which works for me in this design. Uh, while that dries, I'm going to combine some of this silkscreen water-based medium with my Easy Fire enamel, which is uh, sunflower yellow, I think is the name of it. And I'm just going to mix that up to a sticky consistency, kind of similar to my paint just something that I can uh, dab onto my little ponce. So I'll mix it up and I don't need to mix a lot because a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. And I'd rather mix less than more because it does not uh, save over, it doesn't sit well over time. You need to use it within about like two months uh, once it's mixed with a medium. I'll use my ponce to evenly distribute the enamel all over. This is my little four and three quarters by four and three quarters uh, kiln paper and I'm just going to cover it with a layer of the enamel. To help speed up the drying, you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer. Um, just make sure you're not holding it in one place too long, especially if you're using a heat gun, because it will start to burn the paper. Once 
Once my first side is dried, I'm going to go ahead and do another Easy Fire enamel on the back side of my kiln paper. Uh, I decided that you know I wanted the bottom to be treated similarly to the surface where I would be looking at. So I've just got this is like a lilac Easy Fire enamel. I'm again using the silkscreen medium to mix it up. There are other mediums you can use for this. I already have the silkscreen medium and seems to work for me just as well um, as any other one would. Uh, but there are also other specialty stamping mediums that you can purchase. Um, you can discuss those with me and you can find some online if you're interested in trying those out. Now that both sides are dry, I'm going to use another stamp that I have, it's some bubbles, and I've mixed up some of the Easy Fire enamel, I've got a copper one with uh, the silkscreen medium again, and I'm using my ponce to load up the medium, and I'm going to dab it onto my stamp. I'm going to get a couple layers on there trying to figure out the best consistency it will take a little bit of time uh, on this project I think I went a little light I couldn't see everything as well once it was fired but I could still see it some so probably just adding a little bit more medium um, if you want to make sure that you can see all of your stuff as always test 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 try it out Next, I'm going to use another stamp uh, with the Colors for Earth Color Concentrate, and I'm going to stamp this on the opposite side of my glass. I've got a clear piece of glass, and I wanted my little whale stamp here to be facing a certain way to make it look like he's kind of jumping out of the little placard board that my other stamp is holding. Um, so I did it on the opposite side and I use a Colors for Earth Color Concentrate, which also does not go glossy, so I will need to add some clear powdered frit over top of that to make it food safe. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my pieces all together. I've got my clear base, and I have my kiln paper sandwiched in between. I'm just playing around trying to decide which side I like best if I want the yellow background for my stamps or the lilac background. Before I put all this together I'm just going to clean up some little areas on my glass where my medium transferred that I did not want it to go so if you make a mistake you just smudge a little bit or a little extra medium drops on there it can be a lot easier to clean it up once it's dry and I'm just using a needle tool if you just have something sharp and pointy uh, you can just scrape it right off the glass super simple. Now because I'm sandwiching this kiln paper in here, I want to use some little chads. These are just little chunky pieces of grit in my corners to keep the edges raised to make sure that uh, I don't get any air bubbles in there. If I end up with any kind of air bubble, um, my kiln paper will start to disintegrate and look a little messy. If you have an example of a big old air bubble happening in my first uh, try with this design. So I definitely recommend putting little chads or if you want to try sifting powdered frit in between those layers just to make sure there's space for that air to escape. Alright, with a little glue, uh, assembled this and I'll put it in for our first firing which will be a lacy contour. And when it comes out, you'll notice that a lacy contour, those chads still keep the edges uh, a little open. So it kind of looks like two little pieces of paper folded together. Um, but I wanted to get that all assembled before I added some other little details to it. Um, like I said, our paint on top, the Colors for Earth, um, does not go glossy when you fire it. So it is going to need a layer of powdered frit sifted on top. But before I do that, I wanted to add some more interest to the upper corner. And this bottle came with a small squeezy tip, and I just used um, a, a tip from another bottle that I have. You can buy a lot of different squeeze bottles online. You can get like a set of three or more uh, for less than $10, and they're really useful for 
distributing your paint whenever you're trying to do fine lines. But I just swapped the lids and then I was in the middle of trying to decide what I wanted to do and I was having a hard time getting the paint to come out and a little bit more came out than I had planned. Um, so not wanting to waste my paint, <laughs> uh, I decided to just play around with it and make some kind of abstract shapes. Went ahead and used my needle tool to kind of spread it around. I decided maybe there'll be a little pigment monster up in the corner there. Just kind of pulled at the paint until I liked what I saw. And remember, you can always go back in and scratch away. There's still quite a bit of medium on the surface there, so I used another stamp that I have, a different kind of whale. Um, and picked up some of the paint and transferred it to other parts of my design. So I just have some kind of half stamped whales on the surface there. Once the paint was dry, I came back with my needle tool and scratched away uh, any little smudges that I didn't want around and also to clean up some of the little whales. I also scratched in some little eyes and a creepy face to my little splat there. I incorporate a lot of play into my work. I really like experimenting with different techniques and just letting my creativity take me wherever it goes. Really practicing with mediums and working with the material always brings me more and more ideas. Um, there's only so much planning I can do ahead of time uh, before I need to just get in there and start working. Um, so don't be afraid to play around, don't be afraid to make mistakes because you can always try again and make another one. And I always learn something new of what I like and what I don't like when I try things out. Once I was happy with my paint, I set up a piece of newspaper with a little cup for a riser so I can go ahead and sift my powdered frit. It's just a clear powder frit in a little sifter. If you don't have a frit sifter, you can also use an old tea strainer that you might have lying around. And I have it up on the riser so it'll be easier for me to lift it up and move over to my kiln paper. If I sift the powder frit right on top of my glass while it's on the kiln paper, then I'll have a bunch of frit all around the edges that I need to then clean away. This way, all the stuff that falls off the edge will land on my newspaper, and I can collect that and save that for later or other projects. As far as how high you want to uh, sift your powdered frit, um, an eighth of an inch of powder frit, which you can measure with a toothpick, would make any opal powder frit show up. I'm using a clear and so I'm just uh, sifting it on top until I really can't see the paint underneath um, and that ended up working well for me. And after a full fuse everything is covered and it is glossy and my corners are nice and round. I didn't have to do any grinding which is nice. So I went ahead and I prepped my molds. All of our molds um, they have kiln wash on them. Whenever you have a brand new mold, you need to coat it with uh, 8 to 10 coats of kiln wash. And then just in between firings or whenever the mold starts to feel a little bare, if you're not having any kind of sand or grit uh, wipe off on it and it's just smooth, then it needs new kiln wash. Right now I'm putting kiln wash on everybody's stuff. Uh, we need to use gloves and make sure it's all contained. But I've added my kiln wash and then I'll just put my finished piece goes on the mold and goes in for a slump firing. And here's how it looks when it came out. You can see it in the studio. My paints are all glossy on top so this is food safe. I can put my candy in here. Um, and here is a shot of the backside, which you can see I've got my lilac easy fire enamel that covered my paper there. Probably could have added some more medium for my bubble stamps, but I am happy with the overall results for this piece. Looking forward to seeing what everybody's working on in the studio. That's all for this video. Take care. See you soon.